Free Speech Friday, that's when we wrap up the week with a couple of friends of the programme. And with us today, well, from over in the wrapper, I saw her last Thursday. She's running for Masterton District Mayor. Uh, Tina Nixon uh, joins us. Tina, how are you? Very good, Sean. Yeah, and from down at the backbencher, where he pulls the old pint and puts up puppets, is uh, Alistair Boyce, Boycey from the backbencher. How are you, mate? Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. What do we think of the theme tune, guys? Bossa Nova. What, that, sorry, what, what did you say? What do we think sorry? of the What do we think of the theme tune? Do we like that? Did oh, you hear I love it. Me? Okay, you love it. Love okay, it. that's good. We'll stick with that then. All right. Where do we start this week? Let's start with the most recent story. Kelvin Davis basically says you're a plastic Maori to Karen. Um, Chaw from ACT, who I'm sure none of us had ever heard from before, but he very quickly, I suspect, under the watchful eye of the Prime Minister, Boise, wipes it off and says sorry, in fact, rings to say sorry. Um, was that the right thing to do, Boise? Oh, that was absolutely the right thing to do. I mean, this is sort of a symptom and manifestation of... Um, some sort of empowerment of a separatist uh, agenda. So you, you've now got um, leading figures and institutions here, um, as per Tamahiri and, and the Maori Party um, racism and their website, um, coming out um, to uh, dominate the agenda in their own words. So we're getting two forms of... Um, society going on um, and it, it's become inverted racism. Mm. Uh, Tina, what I liked about this was that uh, Karen uh, Chaw accepted the apology and says let's get back to the issues. That's bloody rare in politics. Yeah, it is. And, I, you know, and, and, and Willie Jackson's ha um, been guilty of doing the same sort of thing too years ago um, with Mike Roberts and uh, Miriama Kamo when he basically yeah. said because they were in white broadcasting uh, Pākehā broadcasting system, they weren't very good Māori. Um, and and, it, and, it, and, and um, Boise's right. I mean, the reality is, is we've got this sort of elitist brown um, upper class and uh, fueled by their, their supposed um, expertise around te reo, uh, yeah. see anyone else who uh, doesn't have those uh, degrees of expertise as lesser beings. Um, and I suffer from a bit, bit of that too. We because you've got to... Yeah, I mean, you're, you're part Māori, Tina, but you don't exactly... Yeah. I mean, you don't go around, you know, wearing it on your sleeve no. or making a big deal No, of I it. don't. And, and Naito, as I said, I, I just come out of a meeting with a whole heap of women and said just exactly the same thing. You know, we, 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 I've, I've always been um, suffering from the curse of the white chocolate, um, as they often call us. So, you know, it's, a, it's more about your history and where you come from and who you, and who you identify with in your past um, rather than uh, your ability to speak um, a, a language um, which for many of us has died um, and, and Māori doesn't matter which where, where you come from or whatever mm. you're still Māori Well you're lucky though because according to the Māori party it's common knowledge, it's widely known well known in fact that you are genetically stronger than non-Māori people Tina <laughs> That's just silly Well it's on their website <laughs> And David Seymour tried for four weeks to get Ming Foon to get it off their website. Finally, he yeah. admits to me yesterday on air, live on air, a story so good that Jenna Lynch from News Hub stole the quote um, and, and, and says they should take it down. They haven't taken it down this morning, Tina. Um, yeah, that's disgusting. They should take it down. That's just really that's just divisive po po politics. Yeah, and we're seeing too much of that. And it brings me back to the one central issue at the moment that I don't think this country has come to grips with, which is Tamanaro Tiwai, which is the statement around water, which sanctifies water, and only Maori get to decide how it's implemented. We have no other thing, legislative framework or regulation or anything in New Zealand that only allows one party a decision. Has that uh, already been passed into law? Other. Is that already law? It has, yeah, absolutely. And now even Māori is struggling to work out how they're going to do this. Um, but basically any any source water in the whole of New Zealand has to be decided yeah, and how it's going to be used has to be decided by my Māori. Māori. Yeah, OK. Um, one of you's got some incoming phone too. Tina, that is incredibly concerning. 
Boise, I did look at this thing from the Maori Party, and aren't they just uh, chest thumping? Oh, it's Boise. Were you there, Boise? Yeah, I'm back. No, yeah, yeah okay. All right, I look at this thing from the Maori Party. The statement is, you know, it's common knowledge, or everyone knows that Maori are genetically stronger. Surely they're just taking the mickey and they're trying to get a rise out of all the honkies, aren't they? I don't know. I, I think this empowerment thing um, and this separatist thing and this elitist thing is um, really dangerous. I see a lot of division um, in our society at the moment. Um, and I, I get out there and about, as you know, Sean, I'm happy to talk to anyone, including, you know, unvaccinated protesters, for God's sake. Um, and I, I, when, when we speak for Maori, I mean, I find most of Maori is mo in mainstream New Zealand. And um, so we've got an elite that um, purport to represent all of Maori. Um, and I think Maori are more adequately represented in mainstream New Zealand, and that's where they actually want to be. Um, part of the 85%, not part of the 15%. Mm. I, I see no good in separating uh, Maori from mainstream New Zealand. All we're doing at the moment is giving a, a uh, political economic uh, benefit to an elite group. And it doesn't have to be Maori. It could be any ethnicity or any mm. group of society. Um, that's what's happening. It's transferring over on the, on the back of ideology. Uh, it's a ridiculous situation. Mm. And, of course, there is no barrier to Maori to taking part in politics. And there we go, Tina. Tina running uh, for local body there. Geez, Tina, wouldn't you like to have access to a big charities funds to, to, to fund your campaign? Because we look at... Um, oh, yeah. We look at this charities <laughs> probe into the Waipareira Trust and the National yeah. Maori Authority. And I have to say, I've been up and I've looked at the operations of the Waipareira Trust. I've visited John Tamahiri there. It does a hell of a lot of good work in its community and it gets money and help to places where otherwise it wouldn't get. So I'm not going to decry the work, the frontline coalface work of those charitable trusts. But it seems amazing to me that JT, John Tamahiri, is going to be able to talk his way around the half million dollars that has been loaned to him interest-free to further his political campaigns and the political campaign of the Maori Party. That just looks dodged, doesn't it, Tina? It looks really, it does look incredibly dodge. And um, I would be very surprised if he's going to get over this one. Um, I think it's pretty, it's a clear, clear cut case. Basically, you're not allowed to use charity money like that for political purposes. So he's, he's, in, the, he's in the shit, basically. Um, and, and I've never been a mate of John's. Um, I've, uh, I've done a lot of stories over the years and have actually done some that um, never actually reached the right light of day um, around the Waipadata Trust. Um, I've studied them at length. And yep, I think the people that do the coalface work are absolutely fantastic. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I, I struggle with trust issues with JT. All right. Okay. What do you think, Boise? I mean, we deregister Greenpeace, uh, Family First, because they get involved even tangentially in political issues. Do you think John Tamahiri gets away with using charitable money to fund political movements? Well, we can't let that happen. We, we have this um, uh, massive increase of state uh, and this massive squeeze, especially on small business in New Zealand. And uh, these finances that get meted out um, have really got to be for purpose. Uh, you, you can't have them being diluted out further because someone's got hold of the money and then they treat it like their own. Um, <laughs> so it's incredibly he's got dangerous. No, he's, got no mor yeah, he's got no bloody moral fibre, frankly. I mean, he's using it no. to get a job. What's the, what's, the, what's the MP get today about bloody near 200000 Yeah. Imagine how much $200,000 will buy lunches for, kit, for kids. Yeah, and we look, and we look at the Māori Party. Party. We look at the Māori Party and it's very much a family affair. So... Um, well, no, really, Waititi is John Tamahiri's son-in-law. Yep. Right? So it's all a family business almost, and the loan goes to him. Yeah, I, I agree. And look, the interesting thing I found, guys, is normally I would ring JT and I'd get through to him. We might have a conversation on the phone. Yesterday, yep. terse texts that say, listen to Waititi News, I don't need your radio station or whatever, and, and I text back, oh, well, I didn't ask you if you needed my radio station, I want you to answer some questions, but he's pretty well shut up shop, 
which indicates yep. to me there might be some real, real pressure here. Um, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's talk local body elections. Oh, my God, I'm going to be so glad when they're over, to be honest. You drag my well, I'm ass. Absolutely, I'm, absolutely, I'm absolutely delighted that Paul Eagle has, has ripped off my election campaign imagery and is now, is now, is now doing um, sort of a Harry Potter type thing where he's going to fix the pipes and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. My, uh, yeah. Based on my imagery of let's, let's do something different and, and, and something, you know. Well, I, what I love most work. in Wellington this week, and we had Andy Foster on for a debate of one because the other two, uh, Tory Farnow and, and Paul Eagle wouldn't turn up, so I just had Andy in the studio on his own. Um, yeah. But Tori Farnow finally gets endorsed by the Green Party, where she sat like three feet from me here in the studio. So, oh, no, no, I'm not a Green person. That's just, oh, I'm independent. Oh, it's all such a load <laughs> of todge, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but look, look, the one thing is, even if you win, um, Tina, the mayoralty, yep. even if you win, isn't it going to be a rather pyrrhic victory? Because, I mean, the turnout rates are just so... So pathetic oh, it, because it, of the postal it, voting. And I asked the young people in the office, my young dynamic staff members, I said, I haven't, well, I made the observation, I haven't posted a letter this century. And they yeah. were kind of like, what's a letter? What's yeah, a mailbox? I know, and it, it's tragic. And, and if you don't post it early enough, it's not going to count anyway. Um, and and with the voting figures are, are lower than last time, um, so you know we're really struggling with this. And it's and and, pe and people are not connecting. They're still really angry post COVID, and they don't get local government. And anyway, local government's likely to change because the future of local government's going to be unveiled uh, at the end of October. God only knows what that's going to look like. If it's anything like three waters, it'll be a ship ship storm. Yeah. Um, so you know. It's a hard battle to go into, and at the end of the day, it's a very good battle to be in because it's around local democracy and giving people a say. But the reality is, is they're actually really divorced from it anyway. Mm. So it, it, it's not just local government that is, is broken at the moment. It's actually society is a bit poked as well. Mm. Um, and I can't, I, I, uh, I'm struggling just in terms of where we're heading. Um, and people are just literally, I think, doing just day by day. Mm. Um, because of the uncertainty of, of, of the lives that we're all leading. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a good place, but you just got to keep on trucking and fight the good fight. Mm. Boise, is it sending you rigid with boredom or excitement, local body politics? Oh, I've, got, I've got a couple of points here that I think um, yep. are quite important. Um, the first one is... Um, a group called Better Wellington came out endorsing candidates, and I thought they did a very good job of it. They were immediately cancelled by stuff, accusing them of being anti-vaxxers or something. Uh, but oh. they've, they've come out, they're independent people, and they've um, highlighted independent people who um, can do a good job, um, especially in regard to... Wellington's got a real crisis with... Um, it's CBD and the uh, greenways, walkways, cycleways and now a 30 kilometre zone the small businesses are just getting squeezed out and we're getting a rotated um, ghettos mm. so we need the ideology taken out of the people who need to fix the pipes and the water um, and th this group have highlighted people um, and Andy Foster is one of them mm. he knows the machinations of, of the council um, and th 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 this is good for democracy that more people participate and you get people analysing because we just don't have enough time no one really knows a lot of these candidates so let it come out and uh, it really um, disturbs me that staff conduct this witch hunt of people who might be anti-vaccination. I mean, why are we witch hunting people out of our society? We're cancelling them. Well, because the it's government is acceptable. paying for it through the Public Interest Journalism Fund, some of which is dedicated to local body reporting, as I'm presuming. Well, they want to cancel people out of our democracy. Yes, they we do. Want to bring them in. They're, they're the wrong sort of people. Those people don't deserve... Democracy, Alistair. Democracy is only for people who think like you and go to That's dinner right. parties in Grey Lynn. 
uh, of a woke socialist agenda, and I, I just don't agree with it. I want an inclusive. Um, well, Alistair, you've got it so wrong. You need democracy. you need to have general. I'm sure Jenna Lynch has come for a beer in your pub. You asked Jenna well, Lynch. She's, she, she's cancelled me out before because I'm so outspoken. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's terrible the way I am. Now, a, a second point I've got to make. Um, um, I've organised with some local uh, small business operators a meeting um, of HOSPO and small business um, just to discuss the concerns and to put them out there and to form something of a lobby group, especially in relation to issues like the local council ones and then the central government ones where we've got the fair pay agreement and income insurance coming on its way to hammer yeah. small business again. Um, so that's at uh, my coffee roastery, 22 Kaiforafora Road, 4.30 Monday, and <laughs> all of you are welcome you in hand. small business and hospo, and yeah. put up your hands hey, and shout yeah. from yeah. the rooftop. Yeah, okay, I'll send you the bill for that, boy. See, look, well, other thing... Yeah, I'll put this I'll get it in before you stop yeah. me. Yeah, you might cancel me. <laughs> um, this Avida ad, have you seen the controversy about this ad at Avida? No. No. Oh, okay. Look, then I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna discuss it with you because you'll be flying blind. But you do talk about people being cancelled. Tina, someone tried to cancel me today. Uh, this week, I was really upset. Um, oh, so what, how, what, what happened? Well, Jenna Lynch did a piece uh, from New, News Grub or News Hub. They <laughs> they basically went and they harassed um, a sister of one of the Christchurch Mac victims. Yeah. I presume told them a whole lot of lies about something I'd said online and then went round asking politicians if they'd ever come on the platform again because I was such a bad person. Oh, gosh. I mean, that's what's happening all over the place, isn't it? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I struggle with that whole council culture and I don't know whether Alistair, Alistair knows, but I got involved in that anti-vax stuff. I'm pro-vax, um, but I'm also, I'm also pro personal responsibility and still having a voice and, and dissenting opinion doesn't make you a criminal. Um, so yeah, yeah. I got listed as an anti-vax person. <laughs> I oh, got did you get by a local hunt? paper. Yeah. I got witch hunted the oh, other no, way. This so is the problem. This is the problem. You talk to someone who's the wrong person and you get labelled with something you're not. I'm pro-vaccination yeah. as well. I'm, I mean, I'm probably anti-mandate because I'm so pro-democracy, and I am. But if you talk to the wrong person or you even um, say that they should have a voice and be allowed to be part of the discussion, you get labelled with something you're not to cancel That's you right. out of the conversation. That is not democracy. Have you no, guys ever not. met? I I well, I've been in Alistair's pub quite a number of times oh, over okay, the years. Okay, all right. I've uh, been there for a couple of unveilings. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm the sound of you, you're welcome any time, and uh, your voice can come from the rooftops as well in my pub. Yeah. Well, I've she may be, be the mayor of Masterton. I've even been on back benches. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How do we fight that? And look, I know this is spread out a bit. So how do we fight that cancel culture? And I looked at what happened to the platform this week, and I'll be honest, it was hurtful, and it wasn't particularly nice, and, and, and you know, but that's Twitter. And then I thought, oh, damn it, I'm just going to laugh at her and, and laugh at, at the stupidity of it all. And we then have the thing today. She actually um, plagiarises an interview we did on the platform yesterday morning for a story she did last night. But how do we, how do you take a stand against cancel culture as an individual? Tina? Uh, well, I, saw, I, 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 was, I was prepared to take legal action on mine because they, they defamed me, basically, the local paper. Um, and, and when you're heading into a mayoral campaign in a conservative um, jurisdiction like we are here in Masterton, um, it wasn't it wasn't flash. Um, there's not a lot actually, um, and that's my problem at the moment. It, the most powerless I feel is against the, the wokeism and the cancel culture because I honestly can't see a way through it apart from when you is fighting back, and you've got to keep fighting back. Um, that's the only thing we can do, and and just keep keeping point out, pointing out the inconsistencies of it, um, because it's just it's just such a pervasive thing that's come. I think it's almost been bred out of social media in a lot of ways, mm. but now it's got into the mainstream media, if you can call them that anymore, mm. um, and, and and they've got still of so much power, uh, and and they are really driving this because it's clickbait. It's, it's like socially concerning 
clickbait, but that's still what it is. Yeah. It's, it's just awful. Yeah, well, part of the platform is to counter that. That is one of the re very reasons that we exist. Boise, how do you suggest we fight cancel culture and the fact that it has now permeated uh, mainstream or legacy news media? We've got to be very vigilant, very smart, um, support entities like your own uh, being the platform. I think it made a huge difference to the debate. Uh, you certainly allowed the opposition a voice, which they needed. Um, and then you, you've got to support, um, you know, um, openness and um, different views and freedom of expression at every point. And, you, and you've got to fight hard. And, it, oh, I mean, I've had Twitter tirades on me, unbelievably, unbelievably, even when you're in a situation where you can do nothing about the, the situation you're in. Um, so it's just keeping up the good fight um, and mobilising people and, and allowing them the voice. So the, the process that I'm in at the moment with liaising with, with my business community um, suddenly the feedback starts coming in. They're too, too scared to put their head above the parapet. Well, unfortunately, that's why you need people like me and people like you and people like Tina. We're, we're prepared to put our head above the parapet and get shot. But behind us is a huge mass of people who haven't got a voice. So we have to give them the voice. It's the unheard of New Zealand. And I, I still believe it's the majority of, of New Zealand and they're not fully aware of this culture, this pervading culture that's overtaken them. Um, and it's to keep uh, one narrative as the predominant narrative um, and to, to keep the rest. But the, the end result of it will be a very divisive New Zealand. So we've got to fight that and pull our, our democracy back together. I hear you. I and hear I also you. Really, I also really worry about our young people because what's happening with cancel culture so is... You, as you just basically, that's it, your life ends and, and you have this huge hurdle. It's almost like a, a virtual prison in a way. You, you, you put people on an island and cast them off. And we've lost the understanding of redemption and we've lost the understanding of atonement. So if there is something you've done wrong, um, there's got to be a way back. But cancel culture never gives you a way back. Um, and, and, and that's not that's not a f fundamental value that we should have in society. We need to hold fast to giving people redemption and atonement, and we must always allow our society to be underpinned by a clear value of being respectful around people's decision, d d yeah. opinions, and that's, no matter what they Tina, are. Tina, that takes us Absolutely. back in some ways to the start, and that is the, you know, the Karen uh, Chaw thing, she accepted the apology. She said, let's move on. I just think that was a great exactly. example of how a civilised yep. society can disagree with itself, um, have it's quite emotive uh, fallings out, but you bloody well yep. move on. And I would say the other thing, given my experiences this week, which include people on saying on Twitter I should be fed alive into a wood chipper... Um, <laughs> I just yeah, say, what's that one, great Sean. Fargo? They've been watching Bring Fargo. <laughs> yeah, and I just say, I just say, screw you. I'm still here, and I'm not yeah, going to be bullied you. into changing my view. I'm happy to change my mind if you come up with a better argument, um, but yeah. uh, I am not going to live on my knees. And I think that's what we've all got to do. Which is why it's been so nice having you both uh, here for uh, Free Speech Fridays. We will do this again. Uh, and we much, must catch up at Boise's next time you're in town, Tina. Good luck with the election. Absolutely. That might sound like a good lunch lunch place. Oh, there might sure. be some Merrill visit from Masters. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and Boise, good luck with your meeting, which got way more yeah. uh, free publicity than I intended it uh, to do on the programme today. Well, I, I wasn't going to tell you about it. You might have cancelled me. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair Boyce and Tina Nixon, our Free Speech Friday uh, uh, proponents. <laughs>